Good morning and welcome back to LWCC Live. It is good to have you back amongst us. As you can see, I have some friends with me today and this is my friend Will and my friend Tappy. Uh, we meet often in Basildon. They are pastors of local churches, JCC and Bread of Life. And we meet often to pray uh, and we are good friends. Now when the issue of injustice and oppression came up, especially around the issues of race, uh, we met a few days later uh, and I did what we talked about in the sermon when we said the first point of action is to go to those who have faced injustice and oppression and ask them for their experiences. So I've done that. And actually I was so moved by their, uh, by their answers that I've asked them if they wouldn't mind sharing them again on this video. And I'm gonna ask them just to introduce themselves and then for them to share with us their experience of racism in this town. So first of all, Tappy, we go to you. What, what's your experience been racism in Basildon? Uh, thank you so much, Ricky. Uh, it's a blessing to share this platform with you. I'm uh, Pastor Tapio Munash Nduna. I'm the senior pastor of Bread of Life uh, Church in Basildon. And uh, I am originally of an African heritage, as you can see. I originally come from Zimbabwe. That's where I was born, but I'm a British citizen. Uh, one of the greatest challenges that I've had in uh, settling, especially here in Essex, I lived in London, I lived in, um, in Nottingham, but when I moved into Essex, one of the biggest challenges that I found, especially in Basildon, was uh, getting myself into the community. It was a big, big, big ask. I remember very well my children, I had to change uh, a couple of times from uh, one primary school uh, to another primary school because of racial abuse. My children would be spat at and uh, people would uh, say all the foul things that you can talk of. So it, it was really awful. And I remember very well uh, looking for a, a school probably that would understand that my children were just as human as they, they were. Uh, but uh, looking at myself when we were in the community, I remember very well moving into one neighborhood. And the first day that we arrived, the uh, white guys that were my, supposed to be my new neighbors, the first question they asked us was, so when are you going to leave? And I'm thinking, okay, I am a, I'm unpacking my bags. I haven't even got in. And the question, and truly, we really had a nightmare. It was, it, it was so bad. I remember very well that people would uh, uh, try to put, uh, I think, fire through our letterbox. We had to call the police. Uh, the police had to come in. We, they, it, it went so bad that uh, they had to give us a, a panic button that if there is any noise that is suspicious outside of your house, press this button and then a, a swift response would come in. And one night, I remember because we had two cars, um, one of the nights uh, I was supposed to be taking my, my wife was supposed to be driving to work. So I, I came out to say bye for her to go to work. There she goes, the car, the tire is broken, one of the wing mirrors is broken, it's missing. I thought, oh, okay, this is, uh, this is strange. And so I said to her, okay, no, don't, don't worry. Well, I'll, I'll take you with mine. I drove, took her to work, and we said, okay, we'll sort it out tomorrow. By the following morning when we woke up, my car, instead of wanting to go and pick up my wife from work, my car was broken. Not only the wing mirror, the back windscreen was gone. The tire was, I think, two tires were flat. And, you know, we continued to have these kind of things that would come on the door sometime in the night. Uh, you hear doors come, some bang, bang, bang on the door. You go and check out the door. There's nobody. People have run away. So we, we had really a number of um, some challenging, nasty things that were happening. I can't talk about how many times I've been stopped by the police. I was stopped every now and then. You're just driving on your way. Uh, stop. Do you have a license? Yes. Do you have an insurance? Yes. What is your insurer? And uh, uh, is this your car? <laughs> Say, <laughs> okay. Why should I be driving a car even if it is not mine? <laughs> What's, what, what business is it of yours if, in, if it is not mine? Maybe as long as I'm insured and the car is taxed, everything is okay on the vehicle. That's none of your business. And but you would find all these petty, silly things, and sometimes people are driving behind you, they're driving to just see where you are, where you live, just making you feel very uncomfortable. And not only that, some of those jobs 
they would come when it's time for you to go into the parks. They would just be there out there, just, you know, making sure that you feel very uncomfortable, especially when you've got children. So yeah, actually, William, why don't you share your experience with us too? Well, thank you, Pastor Tapi. Well, thanks, uh, Pastor Ricky. Uh, my name is William Sunu, um, and I'm one of the pastors of Joy Christian Center. Um, originally, I come from Ghana. I was born and raised in Ghana. I, I you know, migrated to the United Kingdom um, at the age of 23. And uh, in fact, I celebrated my 24th birthday soon as uh, I arrived. And um, lived in London for about 12 years before moving down to Basildon. And um, yeah, I, you know, my experience in London uh, was not as uh, challenging as I discovered when I moved to Basildon because uh, by then I was married and um, with two children. So we moved down here. My mother had uh, was then visiting. So I came down with my mother, my niece, and my two children and my wife. And um, we were one of three black families living in the community uh, here in Vange. I, I, I just instinctively decided, I told my family, listen, let's just go and knock on our neighbor's doors and introduce ourselves to them to say that, hey, this is William, this is Agnes. Uh, we, we've just moved here, we are your new neighbors. You know, just trying to sort of break the ice and the reception was very cold. Well, people just, oh, well, all right, oh, okay, and that sort of thing. Um, we felt a bit stupid for doing that, uh, but anyway, we, we persisted and we just greeted our neighbors. And I thought that sort of broke the ice. Uh, at least they knew our name. They, they've seen that we've been to introduce ourselves to them. Um, and then it all started, you know, gradually. Uh, of course, we had a communal park, uh, parking area where we parked our cars because uh, my I was still working uh, full time in London while planting a church here. So I was commuting to London a lot, um, which of course forced us to get a second car. And you will find that uh, each morning you will find a new scratch on your car, on the side of your car. Somebody will just, you know, run their key alongside your car. Um, and of course, because it's a communal car park, you can't tell who did it. Um, but one incident in particular, um, you know, sent a chill down my spine, where similar to Pastor Tapis, um, we woke up one Sunday morning uh, getting ready to go to church in London. And um, we discovered that, you know, my wife's car had a flat tire. So quickly we decided to use my car. Um, it seemed all right. All the tires seemed okay. So we sat in my car, the whole family, myself, my wife, my mother, my niece and two children. And um, of course, my son was very young then, must have been about um, eight, nine months. So of course, my mother carried him on her lap. And uh, off we go doing around 70, 75 miles on the motorway because we're running a bit late. And at one point, um, I just felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit to slow down, and I did. And not long after that, I just heard this rattling noise, so I stopped um, to investigate what it was. And then I realized that uh, my driver's side front tire had actually, you know, collapsed. And I'm thinking, wow, I didn't make anything of it. I just, you know, replaced it with the spare tire. We went to church, came back. Next day, Monday, I took it to... Um, the guys to actually change it for me. And that was when the, when the guy was removing the tires, he said, but you have a new tire. So what happened? I said, I don't know. And then when he examined the tire, then he found out that somebody had actually, um, you know, slashed it with one of these Stanley knives. It was a paper thin deep cut um, on the side of my tire. But unfortunately it didn't go through for the air to leak. So I guess if I had continued doing 70, 75 on the motorway without slowing down at the time that I did, um, we probably would have ended up dead. Anyway, that, that incident, went. but it's been similar to Tapi again. We had to move my daughter um, from the primary school that she was going to, um, you know, we had to move her to another school, which that was when I think uh, I connected with Tapi. But that's it, you know, the, 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 we've, I've had the, racism if you like direct racism you know and then the covert one as well 
and I think one of the most painful one is is when it is very very um, covert in in that uh, it's hitting. You know, they smile. People will smile at you. Hello, how nice to see you and everything. And then when you turn your back, um, you know, all the decisions and everything goes flat against you. And then you know that. Um, so and so, I had a privilege of chairing the um, Black and Ethnic Minority uh, Forum in Basildon Council for about a couple of years, and uh, that was when I also realized that um, the issue of racism and discrimination is quite a big thing, and that it is something we need to um, address in this community um, if we are going to have the kind of community that will be accommodating and uh, welcoming to you know people who don't look like us and so on and so forth i, I believe this thing needs to be tackled head on and once and for all it's going to be a long journey but i'm sure uh, with commitment determination and prayer uh, we can achieve it we can achieve it good thanks william um isn't it just chilling to hear that here are two men that i have deep love for and deep respect for uh, that are doing the same kind of work that we're doing in the same town and are being treated differently because of their heritage, because of where they were born, because of the colour of their skin. They've done nothing wrong, they've committed no crime, yet they're being treated differently. And that is just the definition of injustice. Guys, isn't it sad that we are experiencing this in our community? I think some of the most chilling stories you told me last week was actually more to do with the experiences that you've had even within the church. So I don't know if we're oh, yes. running out of time. So I don't know if you guys want to just give me uh, a couple of stories about how that's happened and uh, affected you in the church. William, why don't we start with you this time? Yeah, I think uh, my experience, because again, when we started the church, um, because of uh, what I studied in Bible school and some of the research I did, um, that was in the 94 there about. So when I came to Basildon and we were studying the church, I knew that definitely there will be an ex existing churches that, you know, uh, yeah, so what I did was I wrote a letter, an open letter, and I sent it out to uh, the neighborhood, and then I tried to make contact with the churches and so on and so forth. And that was when I think um, I contacted the Baptist minister then and, uh, you know, introduced myself and everything. And I was invited to um, a barbecue, which was being organized by churches together. I was excited because I belong to churches um Churches in Communities International. So I thought, wow, we have something similar in Basildon. This is great, you know, very excited. Um, I went to the barbecue and the general feeling I got was, um, oh, hello, how? Uh, how are you? And so you are, Mo, my name is William and uh, what church? Joy Christian Center, full stop. Uh, nothing about what churches in community is all about, you know, what we are doing, nothing. It, it was... So I left the feeling that um, they just wanted to put, you know, faces to the names of the new churches springing up in the community. Um, I mean, it, it took a long time. It took a long time for us, for me to break through. And I'll never forget an incident where, um, but to be honest with you, one of the people who actually reached out, he went flat out and was reaching out to us was, um, I don't mind mentioning his name, was uh, Tim Blake. Um, I mean, Tim was, uh, he was a connector, you know, he, he, he reached out to myself, reached out to Tappy uh, and so on and so forth. And um, yeah, but I, I remember going to this uh, thing where we organize, um, what do we call it? Uh, Love Basildon event and uh, Tony, uh, what's his name? The guy who who wrote uh, Taming the Tiger. He was the guest speaker then. And when during the planning of the whole thing, I went to one of the meetings and I sat between two white pastors. Okay, one on my left, one on my right. And these two pastors insisted on having their communication. You know, talking across me. As if, do you understand? I felt like I've interrupted their conversation that I shouldn't be there where I was. But nobody said, oh, uh, sorry, William, we are talking about this or we are saying this. But they kept on, you know, they kept on having conversation just across with me sitting in the middle. And this one would look across and say, oh, yeah, and talk to me and totally ignore me. And I'm thinking, wow, 
this this we are we are meant to be christians and, and more importantly we are christian leaders and this is happening it was so uncomfortable so after that event i stopped going to the meeting uh, i'm sure team within bemia i just disappeared i gave my contribution and i said forget it i don't want i don't want anything like that if this is what is going to go on so i know churches together has come a long way but there's still some more work to be done because i felt that the initial welcoming was not it wasn't great in fact it wasn't even a welcome you know it was just hey come and let's see your face to know that this is the pastor doing xyz over there and that's it. I, I sent invitations to them several times when we had programs, we had guest speakers. And, you know, usually I get a response from the Baptist minister saying that he's busy or he cannot make it that day. But the rest is silent. Nobody will turn up at our programs and so on and so forth. So that's just my experience. And then missing out, William. I mean, I've been to one of your conferences and it was a huge blessing. So I would encourage that's right. anybody mm. to if you do get an invitation from JCC, I would worship is phenomenal, uh, as is the word. Tappy, what was your experience with um, with church in general? I mean, churches together, yes, but obviously within... Oh, uh, thank you so much, Ricky. Uh, sadly, my experience has not been any different from Williams. Maybe from a different perspective, the, 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 the greatest challenge, or probably the greatest pain that I had was also when I, I was in the community in, in Basildon and discovered that uh, the, the places of worship or the church itself was not as welcoming as, um, as I would have thought or imagined. I remember very well that I tried, I went to all the churches together meetings and I tried to join or to be put on just on a, one of those lists that are sent what is going on. I think it took me not less than two years, just persisting, going. And, and uh, at a point when I had got to a point where I thought, look, this doesn't make any sense. These guys don't really want me in this club. It's maybe a, a closed club where I'm just trying to fit myself in. And rightly, as uh, Will has said, it was just two ministers that I would maybe wouldn't be, would be maybe not ashamed to mention their names that did come out to reach after me. The first one was Tim Blank. And uh, Tim really came and he actually opened his office for us to come and, and pray at his, at his office and would go there and meet and pray. He, he was one of those guys that really was like, okay, you are my brother, you are here. But then it was, it, it was a changing moment. It was actually a turning point where I thought, okay, there are some uh, white guys here that really, are, <laughs> really know that we belong to the same kingdom. We have the same father. And mm. the other guy is uh, Stuart Woodward. And they, they went out of their way to try to make sure that our, our being ministers in this community was, uh, was worth it. And I can safely say amongst, for the first maybe first 10 or so years of our ministry or church here in Basildon, I, I can single out those two. They would always attend any of our events. If I would invite, I would know that um, Tim would turn up or Stuart would turn up. And the rest of the guys, I'm assuming they would have been busy. But it was just interesting to note that um, if they have functions in other churches that were being led by some of our white friends, you would find all of these guys are not busy. So um, I, I, let, let me give it that maybe we were just doing our conferences at a time when they were all very busy. So, but uh, it, it was sad. It was really, really sad to find that, uh, like what Will would say, you go to some of these functions, and some of us who have got African names, you'd be asked a thousand times, oh, by the way, what is your name? And you come to the next meeting again, what is your name? <laughs> and you're thinking, I explained to you that this is my name. And in one case, I think I was asked twice by the same person, <laughs> that, okay, have we met before? I said, yeah, we just spoke a few minutes ago. I said, oh, oh, you're the guy with the African name. <laughs> so, so sometime, you know, it was, uh, it was really sad and painful. I know that, like Will has said, that uh, Churches Together in Basildon has come a long way. And like he rightly said, we belong to Churches and Communities International, which is the London head office kind of church, that, uh, community of churches, which includes different diversity and different backgrounds. So we truly expected it would be the same. 
And also I had an experience of becoming the chair of the churches together in Basildon. And uh, let me say it was an interesting, it was an interesting encounter. It was really an interesting journey. Uh, suffice to say that for the moment, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was also a learning curve for me. And, uh, but there are things that I noted when I was in there that I said, okay, maybe the church still has got some mileage to make uh, in order for this kind of uh, uh, grouping for it to be as open as it should and uh, maybe as, as forthright as it should be in order to make an inroad and a breakthrough in our communities to make sure that the, the communities are living together in harmony and peace. Because the biggest challenge that I notice, for example, right now, we have this uh, Black Lives Matter thing that is going on around. The issue uh, would, it, it, it's whereby it's not necessarily some racist kind of direct racism that is said, but it's the kind of notions or some of the subtleties that take place, that go on, that you would know that, look, this shouldn't have been the case. Uh, and But you go on and you're just thinking, look, I am here because I believe that God sent me into this town and I know that I'm going to be a blessing in this town. And uh, there are many that things that we can say that you would find that, that were very uncomfortable, especially in the uh, church circle that you would have never wanted to have experienced. But there you go. Um, so it was, uh, however, I, I can see some changes that I'm so grateful that I see a number of you guys that are, uh, some of you were not in the community by that time, so I can't blame you. <laughs> but um, we are so grateful to see some of the changes that are taking place. There are a number of uh, white friends that I now have, and uh, I wish it was what it is now, some of the areas, I wish it was what it is now, but uh, sad to say, it was never like that. It was uh, the coldness would have told you that you don't belong here. So that's what it was. Okay, thanks, Tappy. I just want to take a minute to remember that on Sunday, we, we talked about a lot of things, but we said from Isaiah 117, we said, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fabulous and plead the widow's cause. And I think when we address that within our own church, within our own community, within our own community of churches, uh, it becomes really painful. And I'm sure that as some of you have listened to some of these stories, you have squirmed in your seats, not because you were guilty of it yourself, but because we haven't stood up to be the difference. And although, as Tappy said, some of us weren't even here, so we couldn't have been part of the problem, but we can definitely choose to be part of the solution. And as we talked about last Sunday, step one is really just trying to grasp an understanding. And I encouraged you to go and ask some of your friends uh, that may have ex experienced injustice or oppression for their experience. These are my friends. These are guys that I respect greatly. Both of these men are men that I would go to for advice, uh, whether it be personal or professional. Uh, these are guys I hold in high esteem. So to hear of their expression, their uh, suffering their oppression that they faced in our town in our churches it is deeply saddening but let's not take the negative let's take the positive let's take a moment to pray and meditate on what we've heard today and this is step one we're not going to be able to tell you today any answers or any solutions to these problems other than we must start to understand so guys god bless and i look forward to seeing you again soon take care